I believe in divine appointment. I was born into a devout Muslim home, and God had plans, wonderful plans. I've been there. On the day I was going to kill myself, Jesus revealed himself to me, and he gave me a new life. And if you pray with me, and if you believe with me, God is going to give you a new life today. Jesus Christ is real. He changes life. He changes destiny. And he changes nations. And those nations can change the world. Greetings, friends. Thank you for joining us. Today we will be talking about abuse and rape. I was abused most of my infancy, childhood and youth. I know personally the deep scars that a person can carry if she or he doesn't receive emotional healing. I pray that today is a day for you to be completely set free from the emotional hurt and scars of your past. After a short video, I will introduce to you a special guest that will discuss the long-term effects of abuse and how you can truly be healed. My stepdad abused me when I was growing up. He used to threaten me. He said he would kill himself if I ever spoke up. So I never said a word. My husband and I fight all the time. He screams and curses at me, even in front of the children. I've tried everything, but nothing seems to help. My father beat me every day. Nothing I did ever pleased him. I'm terrified to be myself because of him. I can't face any more rejection. One night, my ex-husband set me on fire while I slept. He wanted to collect life insurance. Money was more important than me. All of these women are in desperate need of strength, hope, peace, and love. And they all want to know, how can I overcome my past when all I know is abuse? With me is Frank Meadows, a professional counselor and the founder of the Meadows Healing Prayer Center. He knows firsthand the power of prayer when recovering from abuse. Whether you were abused physically, emotionally, verbally, or sexually, you can be free. I know I used to believe that I was ugly, I was stupid. It was all my fault because I was verbally and physically abused. But I am here today to tell you that God can heal your heart and take away all of the pain from your past. We receive letters every day from women and men from all over the world asking, can I be free? Can I be healed? Can I be forgiven? Here is what some have shared with us. I am 29 year old and was abused by my stepdad since age eight. It went, it went on all the years. I was scared to talk to anyone because he would threaten me, saying, if I talk to anyone, he would kill himself. I couldn't bear the thought of him killing himself, so I kept quiet. I left home three years ago. I started trusting God, but Satan keeps telling me to stop hanging on to God and just create my own destiny. And I have another testimony, another letter that I received. I have been married for eight years and have two children. Unfortunately, I am not happily married. We fight much and most of the time we don't talk to each other. We fight about small things all the time. He is verbally abusive to me, even in front of our children. We talk to our parents, priests and family therapists, but nothing seems to help. First and foremost, I want to just thank you for being part of this program today, Frank. Thank you for having me. I know that so many people will benefit from this program because mm -hmm. uh, our message is hope, our message is freedom mm -hmm. and healing uh, through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you for all the viewers that are watching this program today, what is abuse? Well, abuse is when we are violated uh, against our will in some way, physically, sexually, emotionally, or verbally. Sometimes even spiritually, people are abused. Uh, the most damaging is certainly physical and probably the, uh, the most is sexual, uh, that people are violated sexually, especially as children. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, what happens to a child when a child is 
is sexually abused or, or verbally abused? Or can you separate those two? Um, well, I think when we're abused, it affects us with uh, the, the problem is that lies form in our psyche. Uh, the analogy I use is most of us, when we were kids, maybe we uh, had a sidewalk or driveway put in that was wet with wet cement. And, you know, we, I remember we used to go and write our initials or mm -hmm. something in there. And, uh, and that's a good metaphor. So what happens is when we're soft and pliable, when somebody hurts us and wounds us, and, and maybe I've learned to believe, written on the, uh, my psyche, is sense of powerlessness or despair or shame or self-contempt or that I'm dirty and I'm shameful. And so you could come back to that wet cement, that cement maybe 20, 30, 40 years later, and those uh, soft, pliable imprints would still be in place. Wow. And that is a, uh, sort of what happens to our mind. And so the problem many years later is that uh, I learn, what I learned to believe then becomes my core foundational belief system. Wow. And uh, I've, I've seen uh, thousands and thousands of sexual trauma, the worst mm -hmm. memories, even the worst you can imagine, completely healed as they choose, as people choose to allow themselves to feel, remember, go to the memories of the mm -hmm. past and allow Jesus to give you a revelation of truth. One of the very first things he said, it's very interesting, uh, he said, I've come to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. That's the very first thing he said when he uh, pronounced that he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And that is a word for us, that that's what his heart is. And, and, and it's one thing to know theologically what the Lord does. Yes. It's another thing to experientially know, I know that I know, for 16 years, I've been doing this specific type of healing prayer, and I see I, Jesus always shows up. Now, Amen. the key is we have to show up in the healing process. That's so true. And uh, you said very few words here. One of them, it is almost engraved in us. What right. Something happens in our childhood right. and stays with us. So we may not be going through that abuse at, that, at this moment, but because something happened, it is still there if we are not heal, healed from right. it. Right. And uh, recently uh, I was speaking at a freedom conference for women mm -hmm. and this lady came up to me. She was 85 years old. She said, I am 85 years old. And she just broke down in tears because of something happened at age 12 to her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 85 years old mm -hmm. lady, and mm -hmm. all these years, mm -hmm. she carried the hurt and the pain right, of right. sexual abuse that she experienced at age 12. Right, right. So it doesn't matter that it doesn't continue to happen to us after years after years, if it happened to us once, and that violation can stay with us the rest of our lives if we are not healed, right? Right, right. So what kind of destiny it prepares for a child in the future when child is sexually abused or raped uh, or molested or verbally abused. What, what, what is waiting for that child in the natural? Well, I, I believe different things happen. Uh, first of all, if often when someone's been abused, it's happened to their parents, it happened to their grandparents. There's a generational pattern. Mm. And uh, so generational patterns are number one, they're learned. I learned to be powerless from a mother or father who's been powerless. Uh, but also, uh, I believe the Bible says the sins of the fathers are passed down to the third and fourth generation. And that means patterns of living. In some translations, it says, so the patterns and the spiritual entities that can enter in, uh, I believe that they can set you up to be victimized in the next generation. So there's that spiritual component, uh, but there's the learned component, and, and those things all work hand in hand. And, uh, the, the, and But if, if they're untreated, how do you pass on the sins of the fathers? Mm -hmm. How you do that is by ignoring, denying, sweeping it under the rug, pretending it didn't happen. And what happens is that in the next generation, the same patterns, often unbeknownst to us, are just carried on. And so that's why uh, the Lord desires his children to walk in freedom to, to do that. Uh, you know, one scripture says to confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that, that you might be healed. Now, have you been abused? Hear me what I'm going to say very clearly. You have not sinned. You have not sinned at all. You've been wounded. However, the same principle is true, I believe, is if you've been sinned upon. Mm -hmm. If I have been sinned upon, then I need to confess that 
not confess as I did wrong, but to, to share my story because the enemy of our souls wants to hold us in isolation and shame. And, and when we start, you know, I had somebody share something with me last week they had never told anyone in their life. And it was so shame ridden. In fact, they told me, and some of you are thinking the same thing, that if I ever, if when I tell you this, you probably won't want to see me anymore. And I said, I said, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you tell me something that I <laughs> haven't heard many times before. And, uh, and she told me and, and she felt so relieved and God came and healed those oh. places in her heart. And, and this woman, uh, a little bit older woman is now walking in a freedom she's not walked in her whole life. Uh, even though a, a good woman and a Christian woman, many Christians are not free. Amen. And God so wants true. Christians to be free. Yes. Uh, and some, you know, we can quote the scriptures, he who the sun sets free shall be free indeed. But I, I'm afraid a lot of people are not free. Come on. It's because they have not gone to the source and origin to the root. We have to go to the core foundational places to become free. Amen. And, and uh, to do that, that means I have to expose myself to mm -hmm. other someone else yes. and uh, allow God to go and do surgery, hmm. uh, spiritual surgery. But you know what? It, it's, it's so liberating when people get healed, a new freedom, and God can change the course of your life. By uh, I've seen so many people, their, their, their life changes when they allow uh, somebody who's skilled but also the Holy Spirit to come. All I'm doing when I'm praying with somebody is I'm interceding. I'm setting them up for an encounter with Christ, and I'm and asking Him to give a, revel, a revelation of truth, and I'm just interceding as we feel through the memories of the past, as we identify the lies and the strongholds that are there, and I'm just asking Jesus to give a revelation of truth through the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, it's amazing freedom. I've seen 20,000 memories probably at least completely healed mm -hmm. using the, the, I've learned a process called theophostic healing prayer. And uh, I've used it for about 16 years and it's very dynamic and powerful. Well, you use it on me and it worked. So <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am a witness to that. Wow. And I, I really appreciate what you do and how you serve God in, in mm -hmm. this manner, uh, Frank. Because uh, one thing that I heard from many abuse victims uh, that the moment they are abused, the lies start entering in, just like right. you said. Absolutely. And they don't sin because they are abused, but they start sinning by believing into those lies. Right, right. So maybe many people today are hearing this message and they are thinking, well, I, I have been believing that I could never recover from this. This is a lie. Right. I have been believing that I was, I, I was hopeless. This is a lie. So, uh, and also I have a friend, she's my bestest friend, and she is watching this program right now. And she was, she was once a guest of my program, and she gave her testimony, mm -hmm. how God transformed her. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to say heal, yeah. but transform her. Right. We are talking about the woman, when she was a child, uh, from age nine mm -hmm. to 14, five years, every day raped by her own father. So when we look at a case like that, and I ask her, what was the initial feelings that you had? She said, mm -hmm. worthlessness, right. hopelessness, mm -hmm. anger. Mm -hmm. oh, of course, it brings promiscuity that right, she thinks right. that she can only receive love that way. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff that enemy dumps on people that she experienced this, but it's not the only thing. I want to give this contrast. She had a brother been mm -hmm. through the same thing. Mm -hmm. And she has a sister who is alive, been through the same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And she was the only, she's the only person completely transformed by the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus set her free. Her brother who went through the same thing, committed right. suicide. Mm -hmm. Her sister that who went through the same events just became bitter and miserable mm -hmm. person that ne doesn't want to do anything with God or in a religious way. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing three people that went through the same events, right. but one person was transformed by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the changing. So it is right. possible right. because when I look at her, I say, wow, this is like, you don't smell smoke. You don't, right. I see no signs of that right. you were ever abused at all because you right. look so healthy. Right. So that is right. possible. And you told me some numbers yes. that right. you, you have seen, uh, you know, in your counseling right. years. Tell us about that. Well, even over the world, I've seen people even in different 
cultures or languages minister to them, even with translators, the same healing takes place uh, because the, the simple principle, you know, uh, memories don't need healed per se. What they need is a revelation of truth. Now, the healing happens as a byproduct of a truth encounter in, in the memory. The Bible says not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. So it says also to take every thought captive. It talks about tearing down strongholds. Mm -hmm. In 2 Corinthians, I think, believe that's 10, it talks about tearing, uh, tearing down strongholds, taking every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. Well, what is a stronghold? Belief system. Mm -hmm. It's a belief system. So uh, when there's a revelation of truth that, that everything gets transformed in the mind, uh, and the enemy of our souls, I have a teaching I do on strongholds. And, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that, 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 ra that enshrouds the, the belief system is anger, resentment, hatred. Now, if somebody abused you, some of you hate their guts. And you know what? I don't blame you. Mm. You have a right to do that. However, to be free, the Bible says that we must forgive. And one of the things I find about forgiveness is, is people are, are confused about that. Should we forgive? Absolutely, we should forgive. However, forgiveness doesn't mean that I got healed. Mm. Forgiveness, and I find this, forgiveness and healing intersect, but they are not one and the same. So I can forgive somebody. I hear the sermon on forgiveness at church, and I you know, feel convicted. I forgive somebody, and I'm then ne next year I forgive them again, and... Ten years later, I forgive them again. How come I'm still angry when I see the person who violated me at a family reunion or think of them? It's because I didn't get healed. Mm. I find if we go into the root memories, and, and what I, one of the things that blocks healing and is a part, a process, part of the process is processing through, feeling the pain. That's terrible. No one wants to do that, but it's, it's still stuck in your head, in your mind, uh, until you go there and and... What blocks it is releasing the anger, the rage, the hatred. And I lead people in a prayer and ask them, are you willing to release your anger yes. and resentment? Are you sure? Yes. And if they're not, we have to do some work around that. But I, so Lord, I'm angry at so-and-so because they molested me, they violated me, they hurt me, they destroyed my life. But Lord, I give this hatred, anger, and resentment to you and I ask mm. you to take it. And I ask them to tell me when they sense it lift. It lifts right out of the memory as soon as they will it. They feel it. It just left. And often healing, spontaneous healing, often takes place Wonderful. in that place. It, it is so important what you said. Um, you know, we can't forgive. But it, I, I just want to explain you a little bit further. So if I come and take a knife and cut you, you will have the scar bleeding. It will help you emotionally to forgive, spiritually to forgive. That, that is the first step. Of course, it's going to help you. But the scar is bleeding. Still it's there. So the lies that enemy told you, uh, that you are not worthy, you are hopeless, you are this, you are that, they are still there. You, you have forgiven, but the lies are still there. Your agreement with those lies are still there. The bleeding is still there. So you need to also receive healing from the Lord. You need to seek the Holy Spirit's power to take you to a place like... Uh, Frank talk about to be able to receive that emotional healing and deliverance even further deliverance so you know what happens the person you see the person that you have forgiven and you maybe you are seeing that person but because you are healed it doesn't touch to the sore spot in you anymore because sometimes you are saying why am I giving the reactions that I am giving why am this, this is making me angry? If you are asking you, yourself things like that, there's a deeper scar underneath the problem that causing you to give those reactions. There is something in your heart that is not healed. Maybe you have a broken heart. Maybe you are so violently abused, you have a victim mentality because today we are going to talk about this, that God doesn't want you to be a victim anymore. He wants you to be an overcomer. We are conquerors. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. So from this day on, that self-pity, 
feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, poor me, what happened to me? That needs to go away. Today is the day for you to be completely free from feeling sorry for yourself. Because if you are feeling sorry for yourself, you are still a victim. But today, God is telling you, feel no more sorry for yourself because today I'm going to heal you and you will be an overcomer. So tell us about what would you, uh, how would you advise a person right now going through abuse right now? What would you tell them? How they can cope or what they should seek? What kind of help? Maybe they are getting raped today, every day. As an adult but or as child. A, as, a, as a child maybe watching this program or even an adult, they're under, maybe a woman watching this program right now being beaten up by her husband every single right, day. Right. I've been through that. What would you right. tell me? Well, I, I... I mean, you can't separate a child yes. and an adult right now. Most children, I mean, if you're a child, obviously you need to tell somebody until somebody listens. You mm. need to tell your guidance counselor, your teacher, your pastor, your neighbor, your, your, if it's your father or stepfather, get your mother, yes. you keep going till somebody does something. Uh, that's, that's essential. If, if you're in domestic violence situation, uh, what I tell people is uh, you need to call 911 and have, call the police and have them arrested. You wouldn't, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I even say to men who are abusers, would you allow somebody to do that to your wife on the street? Well, of course not. Mm -hmm. Well, why should you be allowed to do it? That's right. And so that I, people need, a woman needs to uh, make a plan of escape from a dangerous situation. They need to protect her children. I can't tell you how many people have been uh, in a healing prayer session and, and the, then the memories they go to, now they're adults, let's say they're in their 40s, but their memory is, uh, yes, they were being abused by mom's boyfriend, stepfather or father, let's say, mm -hmm. and mom knew. Mom walked by, mom saw, mom kept walking. And it, it, usually it's economic reasons, whatever. I'm telling you, ladies, get out. Uh, get, get into a safe place. Make sure your children are safe. Yes. This is the first thing. And, uh, and especially, I, I want to speak to ch child uh, victims right now. If you're a child, you know one thing that is stopping you is fear. You are fearing, first of all, to speak to someone. To, to say about this, you don't know how to speak about this. I, I perfectly understand what you are going through because I was molested when, when I was a child. Maybe the person who is abusing you, molesting you, is telling you that if you do this, like I read in the letter, I am going to kill myself. Or your mother is going, this is all manipulation. It is all enemies lying to you. You need to get help because you are a child. You have no saving or saying power over something other than you are seeking help. If you need to scream, you need to scream. If you need to run to the first adult that you see, first police officer you see, first social worker you see, you need to seek help to get out of that abuse. Then when they get out of the abuse, it doesn't finish there, right? What they need to do? Well, you need to be safe, first of all. However, most people, uh, the reality is most children uh, don't come in for uh, abuse. Sometimes they do. But more often, it's someone who comes into my office in a, as an adult. Most women, it happens to men and women, uh, probably 30 to 40 percent of women, I think, have been molested mm -hmm. under the age of 18 maybe 10 to 30 percent of men, you know, different statistics vary. But uh, uh, women, I find between 35 and 45, sometimes earlier or later, but tends to be that range, that's when they start coming it, it, unglued or it starts unraveling, things start coming up. And uh, another common uh, thing that happens is dissociation, where the mind dissociates when it's like a fight or flight response. Yes. You know, if somebody is going to attack you, we're going to, you have to decide, am I going to fight or run? Well, what if you're six years old and uh, you, you, you know your mother knows and no one's doing anything about it, or it's a grandparent or it's somebody that, and, and so you learn to run in your mind. Mm -hmm. So that, and you don't consciously do it. The brain just puts it under the age of six, five or six. The brain has the ability to put something in another part of your mind and you don't remember it consciously. Uh, but what, and because that's the way to survive. We're very, people know how to survive and God created us, mm -hmm. you know, I would call dissociation God's gift. God gave us the ability to survive bad things. 
but just like someone who's in uh, has post-traumatic stress disorder that uh, or let's say they're in combat sometimes they don't remember what happened mm -hmm. but later they start having flashbacks it's the brain's way of saying and, and triggered responses a trigger when you're triggered emotionally a trigger is an emotional overreaction mm -hmm. could be about anything you know yes. for instance here's a trigger let's say a uh, husband comes up behind his wife, puts his hands around her, and good, you know, man, he's not abusive, and she all of a sudden freezes and feels trapped and powerless and terrified and dirty, and, and she doesn't even know why. As mm -hmm. I start to pray with that person, uh, all of a sudden memories that maybe she has, maybe she's remembered, maybe she hasn't, start coming up, and we start processing through that, those things and get healing. However, let's say it, it could also happen in a traffic jam. Yes. You know, I'm in a traffic jam and I, I get stuck and all of a sudden I have a panic attack. Now, yes. I'm not thinking about abuse. I just feel trapped, hemmed in. As I start praying with that person, it's interesting. I've had so many times things like that, panic attacks, anxiety. We end up in memories. We get to the root of mm -hmm. it. And they're always shocked and surprised. Wow. Well, uh, today I want to just speak to your life. If you are an abuse victim or you are going through abuse right now, going through, you may be going through rape. You, you may be going through molestation, continuous abuse right now, or even in the past. I just want to tell you there's hope for you. And you can, first of all, I want to pray for you right now. I pray in the, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever can come and intervene into your circumstances. I pray that you receive this prayer and you believe that you are more than a conqueror and you seek out help. I pray that today God will remove any kind of wordlessness, anger, anxiety, a panic attack from your life. I, I pray in the name of Jesus right now that he will show a way out to you because he loves you and he cares for you. And I want you to know that you are not hopeless. God is going to use your testimony if you re reach out to God today. All you need to do is to pray. All you need to do is to see someone and seek help for your life. Don't feel ashamed of the event. Don't feel guilty or condemned because of the event. If you are believing Jesus Christ, you are washed clean under the blood of Jesus Christ. It was not your fault. I am telling you, listen to me. It was not your fault. It is not your fault. You can receive it. You can reject this truth. Because God wants to remove that shame from you. He wants to remove that guilt from you. It was not your fault. You were violated. But here it is. You don't have to live rest of your life as a victim of your past. God wants to give you a new beginning today, my friend. He wants to heal your pain. He wants to touch that scar and set you free. Are you willing to accept his healing and tell him today? God bless you. Until next time.